quarter past four this morning. Anyway, uh, welcome to another macro photography video. And if you watched the last video, I'm actually in the same location as I was then. Uh, conditions are a little bit different this morning because there is way more cloud cover. I don't know if you can see that well enough. Um, there's quite extensive cloud cover here, but already the sun is starting to break through. It's over the horizon and it's just starting to try and push through these little gaps in the cloud. So light levels are going to be lower, which is going to make everything more difficult for sure. I think within a couple of hours, I think those clouds are probably going to have moved away. So again, I've got my Canon 1DX, the 100mm macro f2.8. It's the non-image stabilisation one. And I've got the 1.4 extender, which I used last time, and also a 25mm Canon extension tube as well. So hopefully we get some damselflies. Uh, dragonfly would be very nice as well. So the first thing I've got to do is actually, probably the most difficult, was actually to find a decent subject. And there's no way around it, it's simply a case of spending time and just searching really, really carefully. I found a dragonfly just down here. Looks like a common hawker and he's just resting in a pretty good position. What you really need to decide first is what kind of image you're taking. Don't just go in there with the lens and start firing away. Try and think about the type of image that is there and the opportunity, what you can do, what you can't do. So with that, I would say the, probably the first thing is what is the angle? What is the angle that I want to shoot this dragonfly? In this situation, I can actually get right behind the dragonfly so I can get very, very flat to it and get the camera parallel. What I also did was change my angle. So I started off uh, about the same height as the dragonfly, just trying to keep the camera nice and parallel. And then I noticed that uh, the depth of field was looking very, very shallow. And um, whilst the middle of the body was sharp, the rest of it was actually quite out of focus. And the reason for that is that the dragonfly is just kind of, it's, how should I do this? Like that. <laughs> its body isn't sort of exactly flat towards me. It's actually slightly, turned that way sort of slightly at an angle so what I've done is got a little bit higher just got up slightly higher with the camera so I'm very slightly pointing down and that's just giving a better angle and helping to keep everything parallel so I grabbed a few handheld shots in there which I think is a good idea because it's just just get something in the bag basically uh, just using the macro lens 100mm macro I need to keep my shutter speed fairly high because I'm hand holding and there's a fair bit of magnification with this lens. So I've got ISO 1250, which is giving me a shutter speed of 200th of a second. And I've got F4. F4 is not really a lot of depth of field, but I just want to make sure that the image is sharp. That's the most important thing is the image is sharp. And then I can try and get the tripod in, reduce the ISO, maybe increase the depth of field a bit. So I took some shots handheld, which was just, again, just mainly to make sure I got something because you never know, maybe the dragonfly is going to fly away quicker than you expect it to. Uh, then I decided I can definitely get the tripod in, which is going to improve the quality of everything. So I've got the tripod in roughly the right place with the extender on and I've taken a few shots there. Just dropped the ISO a bit and dropped the shutter speed a bit. I've also got the 1.4 extender. So it's a 1.4 extender with the macro lens, but also the extension tube, because otherwise it won't fit. And what I didn't really mention in the last video, I don't think, is that the reason for using the 1.4 extender, uh, probably the main reason for using it, is actually the working distance. So when you're working with insects, if you just use the macro lens, then yes, you can get close and you can magnify the image, which is fantastic, but you have to get very, very close to the insect to be able to do that if you've got something like a 100 mm macro or smaller. Uh, but with the 1.4 extender, it actually allows you to shoot from further away. So you still get the, the same effects, you know, so you still get really good magnification, but you can actually shoot from further back. Now that is definitely looking better. Um, so much easier when you use a tripod. When I was doing the handheld shots, you know, I could just feel my body moving and it's much harder to hold the camera stable. 
now on the tripod not only is it stable but I can just take my time a little bit more particularly with focusing which is really crucial I can take more time with focusing where I want I've dropped the ISO to ISO 800 which is going to improve the quality a bit and that's now giving me a shutter speed of 125th of a second so by using the tripod I've been able to lower the ISO and improve the quality So now I'm going to decide exactly where I want the camera to be, I'm going to make sure that everything is framed up perfectly, I'm going to take time over my focus using live view and I'm going to keep the ISO as low as possible to try and give me that optimum quality. Now I don't know if you've noticed but I've actually got some foliage in the way um, and what I've done, I haven't positioned the camera to get round that, I've positioned the camera exactly where I want it to get everything nice and parallel and then I can deal with those obstructions later on. I was perfect, I managed to bend that offending piece of foliage out of the way without damaging anything. Uh, I've just noticed the dragonfly has actually moved slightly round, it's moved slightly round this way, which means I need to move the tripod else I'm still not going to be parallel. So I'm going to move the tripod into a better position. I've got a feeling I said hawker before. Did I say hawker? I meant darter. So, it looked like a common darter, which it is, because the legs have uh, just got a little bit of yellow in them, whereas the ruddy darter are completely black. I've just found a common darter that's recently emerged, and I can actually see the, uh, the chrysalis further down on the stem from, from whence it came but I can't really get in because it's further out into the water and I can't really get towards it but um, and I couldn't get both in the frame because the dragonfly and the, la the, the chrysalis are actually too far away from each other but nice to see I definitely had a feeling this would happen it's very very warm today uh, the dragonfly is starting to move quite a bit One, probably the warmest night of the year last night and the next two nights possibly even warmer so I knew there was a good chance of the insects getting more active earlier on today and it's supposed to be about 17 degrees I think, something like that and this dragonfly was lower down, then he started walking up he's actually now moved completely around the other side of the stem to face where the sun is um, so in these situations you just got to do the best you can that's why you have to make the most of the opportunities I'm glad that I took some shots when I did well, I was hoping to do a little bit more photography with that dragonfly and it's put itself in a position where it's really not very good to photograph anymore. So again, you've got to make the most of your opportunities um, and it's got very, very warm very quickly this morning. In fact, the sky now is completely clear. Uh, I can't see a cloud in the sky at all. So it's changed very, very quickly. If you saw the last video I did, I had some interesting comments about the effects on depth of field when using the 1.4 extender. Uh, some people saying that it didn't actually affect the depth of field at all and maybe it did affect the appearance of the background to some extent. Um, so I decided I really wanted to test that and I was trying to test it here. I decided on this uh, great willow herb, which is so difficult to do. I've done a few tests, one is actually photographing the vlogging camera I'm using now and just positioning it so I've got a background. Now what I'm interested in is really the, the practical application of this if it does make a difference when I'm photographing insects. Um, so what I'm doing is actually filling the frame with the same amount, the same amount of stuff in the viewfinder uh, as I would if I had a damselfly or a dragonfly when I'm trying to get pretty close and fill probably most of the frame with it. So I'm trying to do that both with the macro lens and with the 1.4 extender attached for these comparison shots. Um, and then basically just looking at the background to see how the background looks differently in each image. I'll put them up on the screen now for you to have a look and see what you think.
doesn't really look that different to me at the same aperture. So the ISO is the same. Uh, the shutter speed I've had to change a little bit just because you lose light when you put the extender and the extension tubes on. Uh, but that's not really going to affect anything else. So same ISO, same aperture. And I've just done my very best to keep the composition as as accurate as I can on each frame but definitely the main application for using the extender for adding that to the macro lens in the field is that it does in it does increase your working distance so that's one of the reasons I used it uh, and it's good just to test it now as I have done and when I've taken the shots with a macro lens and then with the extender attached as well and the extension tube um, it's definitely increased my working distance so every time I put the extender on I've actually needed to come back uh, certainly a good few inches and that's going to make a difference when you're photographing those insects so for that reason it's definitely going to be a useful tool to use that on occasions but I think basically now if I don't need to be further away and increase that distance between me and the subject then there's probably no reason to actually use the extender it's probably fine with just the macro lens on its own I don't think those backgrounds are really affected it, it always seemed to make a difference when I've done it in the past but when I've tested it now I really can't see much difference between the two. So uh, anyway, I hope that was useful. Well, I believe this is time for the outro as the, um, the, the proper word in the business, I think. Um, so I'm gonna go get a second breakfast and find out which weasel in the soup is the next prime minister. And uh, thanks for watching this macro photography video. If you're not a subscriber, then um, you can join the channel very easily and very quickly and just unassumingly even by clicking the button and <laughs> um, and if you click uh, and if you click the bell icon then apparently that gives you notifications um, but I don't seem to get them all the time when I've done it so yeah I'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon for another video somewhere